O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now, as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of light, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Wisdom of Ecclesiasticus. These also were godly men and women whose righteous deeds have not been forgotten. Their wealth will remain with their descendants and their inheritance with their children's children. Their descendants stand by the covenants, their children also for their sake. Their offspring will continue forever and their glory will never be blotted out. Their bodies are buried in peace but their name lives on generation after generation. The assembly declares their wisdom and the congregation proclaims their praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Looking up to heaven, Jesus said, as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, 
so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may become completely one so that the world may know you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In any list of Anglican theologians, Richard Hooker's name would stand high if not first. He was born in 1553 at Hevetry near Exeter and was admitted in 1567 to Corpus Christi College, Oxford, of which he became a fellow 10 years later. After ordination and marriage in 1581, he held a living in Buckinghamshire. In 1586, he became master of the temple in London. Later, he served country parishes in Boscombe, Salisbury, and Bishopsburn, near Canterbury. A controversy with a noted Puritan led Hooker to prepare a comprehensive defense of the Reformation settlement under Queen Elizabeth I. This work, his masterpiece, was entitled The Laws of Ecclesiastical Polity. Its philosophical base is Aristotelian, with a strong emphasis upon natural law eternally planted by God in creation. On this foundation, all positive laws of church and state are grounded from scriptural revelation, tradition, and reason. Book five of the laws is a massive defense of the Book of Common Prayer, directed primarily against Puritan detractors. Hooker's arguments are buttressed by enormous patristic learning, but the needs of the contemporary worshiper are paramount, and he draws effectively on his 20-year experience of using the prayer book. Concerning the nature of the church, Hooker wrote, the church is always a visible society of men, not an assembly, but a society. For although the name of the church be given unto Christian assemblies, although any multitude of Christian men congregated may be termed by the name of a church, yet assemblies properly are rather things that belong to a church. Men are assembled for performance of public actions, which actions being ended, the assembly dissolveth itself and is no longer in being, whereas the church which was assembled doth no less continue afterwards than before. Pope Clement VIII is reported to have said that Hooker's work, quote, had in it such seeds of eternity that would it abide until the last fire shall consume all learning, unquote. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed John the Divine, blessed Richard Hooker, and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. O God of truth and peace, you raised up your servant Richard Hooker in a day of bitter controversy to defend with sound reasoning and great charity the Catholic and Reformed religion. Grant that we may maintain that middle way, not as a compromise for the sake of peace, but as a comprehension for the sake of truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessings of the day that is past and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. We remember this night all who are dear to us, all in our parish prayer list, all of those in need, and all who have died. During this time of pandemic, we pray for those directly infected with the virus, for those at high risk of infection, for those in quarantine, the shut-in, and the infirm and for those whose lives have been claimed by the virus. For all hospitals, doctors, nurses, and staff, for first responders, for service industry workers, and for those experiencing financial loss and uncertainty of resources. For all schools, students, teachers, administrators, and school staff, for all scientists and those working to find a cure. We entrust each of these to your never-failing love and care for this life and for the life to come, knowing that you are doing better things for them than we can ask for or imagine. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us Break the systemic racism that pervades every segment of our society. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle to accomplish your purposes on earth as we strive to enact a just society that at last all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, 
by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us at the Chapel of St. John the Divine. To find out more about the chapel, please visit our website at chapelsjd.org. Here you may find out more about the Episcopal Church, rewatch a service, make a financial contribution, and more. Please join us on Sundays at 10 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 5.15 p.m. Daily Compline services stream at 8 p.m. Our live streams begin five minutes before the service begins. Again, thank you.